In this segment, we're going to discuss the importance of the photo period and the role that the light cycle plays in the flowering cycle of the cannabis plant. So Kyle, tell us a little bit about what all this means. What is photo period? What is light cycle? Photo period is a fancy word for light cycle. Okay. So the light cycle is the number of hours of light and the number of hours of dark that your plants are going to get. And obviously in vegetative, we went over that there are multiple, there are variations on the possible light cycle that you can sure, use. Sure, you got a few different options. It'll still keep the plants in that veg state. Right, but in flowering, it's, there's really only one light cycle. It's 12 on, 12 off. All right, so in nature, what dictates the, that light cycle is the sun, right? So in the springtime, you know, the days are getting longer. That plant's in that veg cycle. It recognizes these days are getting longer. But after the summer solstice, the days begin to get shorter. Right. And effectively, this is the trigger that tells the plants it's time to begin flowering, correct? Exactly. So the flowering of the cannabis plant is directly controlled to the number of hours of darkness that it receives. And your typical cannabis variety won't flower, won't begin to flower, until it receives 12 hours of continuous darkness. And in fact, it takes multiple days of 12 hours of darkness for the flowering hormone to build up sufficiently inside the plant to trigger it to go from vegetating to flower. So does it matter how long a plant has been in the veg cycle before it could go into the flowering cycle? Not in respect to it actually triggering flowering, okay. only in respect to the overall size of the plant and the overall finishing yield. So you can veg a little longer if you want a larger plant to get a larger yield, uh, but it's not ultimately going to affect uh, the time in which it takes to ripen. So regardless of how long a plant has been vegging, it could be put into the flowering stage at any point by manipulating the light cycle. Exactly, so the grower actually controls, gets to choose the size and yield of the finishing plant. So let's discuss a few of the different ways that the grower can manipulate the light cycle in different environments. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a outdoor environment, mm -hmm. there's a technique uh, that I've heard, it's called light depth. Uh -huh. Could you explain a little bit about what that is and what that means? Sure. So light depth gives you the ability to uh, flower the plants when you want and not wait for that 12 hours of darkness. So you can get multiple harvests outdoors by simply pulling the shades and drawing them back to block out a few of the extra hours of light at the end of the day so that instead of getting 12 or 14 hours of light and only eight hours of darkness, waiting for the season to come around, you can trigger flowering by light deprivation. And by pulling the shade effectively uh, in the outdoor growing environment, you will see these hoop house type structures, right? Mm -hmm. They'll use the PVC tubing, create these kind of hoop houses. And they call it pulling tarp. And they call it pulling tarp. And right. effectively they have the tarp that, you know, during the course of the day is down, but right. at, once it hits 12 hours right. of sunlight and you're ready to cut that photo period and trigger the flowering, right. They pull that tarp over the entire hoop structure, ensuring that complete darkness within that environment. And that's one way to trigger outdoor plants into the flowering cycle, right? right. Uh, how about in the greenhouse environment, Kyle? Well, here in the greenhouse, as you can see behind us, there are all these bunched up black tarps. And up over the top, it's kind of out of the shot, there is a big black tarp that'll actually go across the top of the whole canopy, uh, effectively blacking out this whole uh, greenhouse. We could do this in the middle of the day. We could pull everything and it would become completely dark in here. So it's, the, it's a similar theory as the hoop house pulling of tarp. It's just on a larger commercial scale in this beautiful greenhouse environment. And we don't it, have to have 30 people with pulling tarps over the end. It's all automated. That these systems are actually automated right. and are set to timers, correct? Exactly. Great. Exactly. So that's what enables a, a, a business like this to pull for, for more harvests a year. So once, uh, once a plant has been triggered into the flowering cycle, how long does it need to stay under this photo period to complete the flowering cycle? Good question, until it's done. <laughs> now, that is important because I feel, and most people agree, that uh, you never want to harvest a plant early. This is all genetics. Um, so the time it's gonna take that you have to uh, stop pulling the tarp is going to be dependent by the variety of cannabis that you're growing. So an, an indica variety may only take eight weeks, seven to eight weeks of darkness, mm -hmm. whereas a sativa variety could take 12 or more weeks sure. of darkness to get it to full fruition, to be ripe and ready to pick. Gotcha. Uh, and we mentioned that pulling of the tarp, but it, actually there's a third method. 
and that's for the indoor growers you know don't effectively they're not working with the sun they're not working with the cycles of the sun they're working with cycles that they control themselves through the right. artificial lighting that they have in the indoor environment correct right so we just use timers so we'll set our timers during the veg to match our veg cycle that we choose and then as soon as we're ready to flower change the, the uh, timers over to a 12 and 12 light cycle within seven days you're going to start to see the hairs form and you're on your way excellent uh, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about uh, photo period and light cycle before we move on? No, photo period is pretty straightforward. Um, you really don't have a lot of choices during flowering. It's 12 on and 12 off. Never interrupt the night cycle. Ah, uh, yes. Unlike the day cycle, with, which is a little more malleable, sometimes clouds come over, sometimes you have days that are, it's a storm and there's very little light anyways. So it's non-interruptive to really uh, break the day cycle. The night cycle, however, once it's been initiated, you don't ever want to turn any lights on. It's the best way to encourage hermaphroditism. So what you're saying is, is once the plants are in that flowering state, and once they're used to that certain period of darkness, that, that minimum of 12 hours of darkness, that that darkness period should not be interrupted with some light. Not until harvest. Okay. Otherwise, you are risking uh, the plant reverting back to vegetative state. Yep. The interesting thing is that the cannabis plant will revert back into the, the, the vegetative state. Um, uh, that technique is actually used to re-veg. Sure. at the end of flowering sometimes. You only have one plant of a certain variety. You don't harvest the whole plant. You just take the buds off of it and leave a few sprigs at the bottom. Yep. And then you put it back under a 24 hour photo period and you can re-veg the plant. Um, but a lot of these newer hybrids nowadays really don't like to be messed with like that. Sure. It is unnatural. Uh, so do that at your own risk, beware. Absolutely.